Okay, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Rakut and Viber Roundtable at the GSMA WAS 13. Today we're going to speak about the role of over-the-top players in today's telecom industry. What we will try to do in the next 60 minutes is to create a discussion about how OTTs such as Rakut and Viber merge and affect the telecom market. For this, we gathered here today a team of senior experts to join this panel and to make it interesting and valuable for you. We will be focusing today on messaging and the voice markets, and each panelist will share his perspective on the subject. During the round table discussion, if you have any questions, simply click the chat button and write your question. We will do our best to reply depending on the time we have. So first, let's uh, just quickly introduce our panelists for today. From uh, MessageBird, joining us is Dan Richards, VP Connectivity. From InfoBeep, we have Kresh Ozmak, Director of Products. And from Telecom Italia Sparkle, we have Zvika Kaspi, VP Europe. From Rakut and Viber, we have my colleague, Noah Barshai, Senior Partnerships Director and in charge of our business messages platform. And myself, I am Matan Baf, Senior Director of Telecommunications and in charge of our SMS A2P and voice hubbing services. So again, thank you for joining us and let's begin. We want to, sp to start uh, with speaking about the messaging vertical and the SMS A2P market with you, Dan. Dan, you share a vast telecom experience working in some of the big brands in the industry. Tell us about your position currently and what is MessageBird is up to these days. Thanks, Matt, and thanks for inviting me to be here today. Um, so I'm VP of Connectivity for MessageBird. So I look after um, everything that's voice and everything that's messaging um, as the, those two channels roll up to me. So all of our vendor management, vendor acquisition, um, our connectivity uh, footprint, you know, our connectivity network reports up to me. I also have management of the wholesale businesses that we run on both of those channels. Um, so MessageBird is a CPaaS company. We've been in the business since uh, 2011. Um, we have a number of APIs. Our, our business is making communications between brands and customers um, simpler, easier. We uh, uh, try to uh, make conversations between brands and customers as natural um, as it would be for you to communicate with your family and your friends through your desired channel, whether that's SMS, voice, messaging, um, and, and or, you know, we offer that omni-channel experience. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Um, looking at our current A2P market and um, uh, from, from message rate perspective, what are the major trends that you see today on the market? Okay, well, the market is still in high growth, right? Um, A2P is set to grow for the next few years. Um, really, it's a digital transition as customers look to, uh, brands look to adopt cloud technology. Um, we've seen that digital transformation of people looking for alternate methods to communicate with their brands really accelerated by the global pandemic. Um, and that demand for the omni-channel experience, you know, people aren't visiting the high street store anymore. So brands have got to look for other ways to make that interaction with their customers as natural and as native as possible to their users. Um, obviously, monetization is still uh, a, a big uh, trend that we see out there with the filtering of the networks and the cost of A to P delivery uh, increasing around the world. Um, it's interesting from my perspective that we sit back and see where that tipping point is when the cost of A2P delivery reaches a point where people really are motivated to find another channel to uh, verify their users um, and, and where that tipping point's going to be. Um, then obviously we've got the ongoing consolidation and acquisition, the M&A activity around the market um, is continuing, uh, continuing trend. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You talk about uh, omni-channels and uh, alternatives to A2P. Uh, obviously, there's a, there's a lot of omni-channels and they are involved, the, uh, the OTT players. Uh, how do you see uh, the OTT players uh, merge uh, into the market and what are the effects that they brought to, to the market? Um, 
the, the OTT, it, it's about really the omnichannel experience is giving uh, an end user the communication experience that they want, okay, through their preferred channel. Um, and the OTT is a huge part of that. You look at uh, the, um, you know, the younger generations that don't communicate via email, they don't expect to have to pick up a phone, they want to be able to look at their handset, choose the channel that's natural to them and interact through that. And it's uh, typically an OTT where you know, Viber Rakuten or others, um, they don't want a fragmented experience. They want to be able to choose the channel that they use uh, and have that interaction with their brand. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, maybe I would just add to that, that um, I think uh, at the very basic level, um, OTTs are a big sender or a big client uh, for sending A2P messages to just for their um uh one-time password needs so in that sense i believe uh that's that's the one one side of of the industry and obviously uh players uh, such as the message bird such as infobeep um are playing a big part of uh, uh terminating those sms's uh for uh the ott for the otts uh, but um, but I, and, and I think at this, at this angle, I think uh, some of the OTTs have chosen have chosen to outsource uh, their um, their sending their their OTP uh, sending uh, technology to someone else to send their OTP messages for them, um, and some of them like Rakuten and Viber have chosen to to be an expert in the telecom industry. And also, and also um, uh, deal and 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 create their own connections around the world to be able to send A to B messages. Um, then, uh, and, and uh, message where they've been using Viber also um, as a, as a, as a, as an A to B vendor. Uh, can you can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so say we've, we've been happy to offer our connectivity to uh, to Viber, Rakuten Viber for, for some years. Um, and the same point, you know, we have high connected, high quality connectivity around the globe, but no one player has every single network connected, right? And we're more than happy to make use of, uh, the, you know, the uh, high quality direct connectivity that Viber uh, Rakuten has been able to build. Um, you know, we're, we're happy to have that trading relationship um, with, with Rakuten Viber. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so th thank you very much, Dan. Uh, and we are uh, staying in the messaging department and, uh, and, and would like to move uh, to you, Kresho, and talk about, um, and, talk, and, and, and continue talking about the, the, the messaging part. Uh, Noah, would you like to uh, take this uh, uh, from here? Sure, thank you, Matan. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Uh, thanks for everybody uh, who came. Uh, so like uh, Matan uh, said at the beginning, uh, my name is Noah. I'm managing the business messages in Viber in the past five years. Um, so today everybody is well familiar with business messages and how important it is uh, for brands. Um, but uh, we were, I think, the first to realize uh, how important uh, business messages is uh, for our users. Uh, when they want to communicate uh, with businesses over the app uh, that they anyway uh, they're all the time chatting with friends and families and um, I think it was five years ago um, we can all agree it was a, a, a good catch <laughs> uh, right since uh, since then we see um, um, a lot of uh, from our competitors a lot of uh, um, messaging apps that are joining uh, this uh, trend let's call it and offering business messages to their clients. Um, also, it's, uh, we can, needless to say, that uh, even the, the corona really pushed uh, the ones that uh, were still hesitating uh, to do the same. Uh, so the digital transformation that uh, we talked about uh, many years now uh, made a real progress um, in the past year. And the whole global situation uh, basically forced even the smaller brands uh, to adopt uh, uh, the digitalization. Um, so today uh, we have uh, Kresho here uh, from Infobip uh, with us in the panel. 
Um, so InfoBeep and Viber uh, are partners in business messages uh, since 2016. Uh, they were actually uh, the first uh, partners we had in business messages. The, uh, they were brave enough to recognize uh, the potential uh, in business messages as an alternative to SMS and to emails and offer it uh, to their clients. I think since then our collaboration it grew and expanded, um, you know, from few customers to uh, thousands and, and from few markets to a lot of markets, especially in the past years, uh, we also expanded their, our relationship to uh, Southeast Asia and not only CIS or CE. Um, so uh, I think, Presho, uh, if you want to uh, just uh, say a few words about uh, where we started and uh, how do you see business messages um, in, in, uh, in the whole ecosystem of InfoBeep. Um, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks now for the introduction. Uh, hi, I'm Kresho, Vice President of Products in, in InfoBeep. And I started five years ago in InfoBeep as a product manager for Viber, actually. That was my first job. Uh, and I recall we were super excited because already then, five years ago, so 2016, we realized the potential of the of the channels, of the of the of the Viber as the communication channel. Uh, Infobip is a global CIPOS leader in this space, and we grew on grew on SMS, uh, and we were pretty, uh, you know kind of, we, we identified the risk, okay, if you introduce Viber, it's gonna eat our SMS. However, what we realized very soon that Viber is opening completely new use cases, completely new doors, and it's growing really exponentially. So the engagement when you use a chat app is significantly higher than when you use SMS, let's say, or, or, or similar channels, uh, or, or even voice. Uh, but it doesn't replace it, it, it extends, and the engagement of end users can, it's not measured even in percentage, it's measured in, you know, in exponential rate. So it's X, X times uh, the engagement rate. And you know, in marketing, for example, or in engagement, if you wanna do 0 0.5 uh, engagement increase, you need to invest a huge amount of money. This channel Viber provides a much, much more easier and efficient way to, you know, to, to to grow the engagement rate of, of end users. Uh, and what is important, all of you here, while we are speaking, most probably you are listening to us a little bit, but you checked your emails potentially, and you, but you checked your uh, OTT message app, Viber uh, being potentially one of the top ones that you have checked. So you check the messages there. So it is really natural that you start communicating with businesses how you're communicating with your friends and family. And that's how we actually, what we very soon realized that it is natural that receiving a message within Viber would be super engaging for, uh, for, for end users. And uh, as Noah mentioned, so we grew from zero to hero uh, to a few thousand clients uh, and we see a lot of engagement. We entered the CIS region and we are from, our HQ is in, is in Istria and Croatia. In this region, Viber is very strong. But last couple of years, we grew, we are growing significantly in Southeast Asia, which is a super uh, growing market. With Rakuten uh, being one of the strongest brands in the region there, we expect even more growth. Thank you, Christian. Um... If, uh, if we want to review quickly uh, um, business messages, a bit uh, a background, so we can say, uh, I obviously agree with you, uh, Krasho, that the purpose uh, wasn't still is to allow the customers, uh, the, our users, uh, to engage more easily uh, with the businesses via Viber, uh, like they do with friends and families. Um, and, and it really was a natural uh, evolution, let's say, um, and one key factor um, that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people probably wondering uh, how is it affecting our users? Uh, so one, one key factor here, uh, messages uh, on business messages can be sent only to uh, opt-in customers, uh, meaning that uh, business messages is not a, an acquisition tool. The messages are being sent only to brands, uh, to the brand's database. 
And we are not selling any information about the users, including the phone numbers. And then as a result, um, the messages are relevant for the users uh, and they benefit uh, both the users and the businesses uh, that are able to engage with the customers, with, uh, providing them uh, with a lot of services among all type uh, of messages. Um, so if we're uh, to, uh, to uh, review the type of messages that are available, uh, the classic type of messages is obviously the promotional uh, content, uh, custom offers, coupons, uh, even birthday celebrations or any loyalty uh, program statuses. And also uh, what we call uh, transactional uh, messages, um, which is um, more of a service, utility, uh, notifications, uh, uh, balance updates. And then recently, um, it's not so recent, but uh, in the past two years, uh, we developed the, um, the conversational type of messages uh, to even uh, make sure that we are more uh, relevant for the users or, and, and uh, they find it more uh, beneficial for them. And I'm talking about customer service, uh, customer support. Um, it's um, by Viber, it will be easier and faster. Uh, then the users won't need to leave the app uh, to contact customer uh, support uh, and not to make a call uh, or to send an email or God forbid even to, to physically go somewhere. Nobody's doing it anymore. Um, it's not even the young uh, generation. So uh, us and uh, even my parents. <laughs> yes. And uh, the Corona actually forced it. So you, it's not that they don't want to go, they can't go sometimes. Um, you know, the, uh, all the quarantines that we are all well familiar with. Um, and then um, uh, again, the corona really uh, pushed this uh, engagement and the digitalization uh, faster. And what we introduced uh, recently is um, actually a solution that will, will provide, um, let's say, 360 uh, solution to the, to the brands that wants to both communicate with their existing database uh, and their clients and uh, to acquire uh, new clients. Uh, and I'm talking about uh, bots here. Um, Infobip, uh, again, were one of the first uh, to adopt uh, the Viber bots. And, uh, and to enter uh, this to their uh, user journey. Uh, Kresho, if you want to uh, talk a, a little bit about it, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So I would, I would go a step back. Basically, we, we are, and we were, we started 2006 with an SMS aggregator and I described then uh, what, what we realized and it was mentioned by, by Dan and Matan, uh, there was omni-channel sometimes 2010 so where, where viber actually fits ex excellently with the with the business messages and what was the next step of evolution sometimes 2016 2017 it was uh actually we entered in the conversational space again going back to us here on the call we are used to chat over viber we don't just receive messages we also reply to those messages so it is intuitive that you start having a conversation not with friends family but also with the brand and that's what is happening today. So we are in this age of conversational experience and we see huge amount of brands adopting it. And if you are not adopting it, you should, because that is definitely the, definitely the future. Uh, where Viber with its proposition with Viber bots, we call it conversations internally. It is offering the capabilities that you can first of all, search for a brand uh, within the app and then start interacting with, with the brand. And then it's actually, if you look at the customer journey, the end user journey from some engagement part to notifications part, uh, now you have the tools that you can uh, also support the client during the onboarding, during the support, which so you, are, you have all the tools to cover the whole customer journey uh, uh, using, using, let's say only, only Viber as the, as the single, single application. And there is no need to, to leave the app. So which implies exceptional experience for the end user. It implies faster resolution time because 
it is you know usually the voice call centers are overloaded and so on and you can do the the call deflection to 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 start chatting and so on so there is a nice fit and if you implement an omni channel strategy then really you can you can uh, tailor the user experience in the in the best way uh so conversations either you put a chatbot either you have uh, an, a live agent talking so this is what we are how we are working today with viber we have answers our building bot building platform and conversations our uh, agent agent panel and we have viber as the communication channel enabling customer support use cases from one side and then there is self-service uh, selling use cases on the other side let's say you want to top up your in the telco environment you want to top up your bill you want to purchase iptv you want to buy some additional packages buy a new phone and so on you can do it over a chatbot uh, which is integrated on the on the viber channel the future which brings where we see it already it's the conversational commerce and it is actually the movement that you wouldn't be leaving the app anytime soon so that's that's the that's the future with uh, with introduction of uh, catalogs searches then the advertising is coming so that that we see as the future for for chat apps where viber has always been the leader so we we expect that they will keep the pace as as as, as partners we expect that viber will keep the pace and introduce and, and actually challenge us with new features that we are even not thinking they did it in the in the history so we expect the same to happen uh, again Noted. <laughs> we will. <laughs> Thanks, Kresha. <laughs> just sorry, just uh, about COVID, just to just to follow up on that. So COVID, uh, as as Noah mentioned, it, uh, COVID unfortunately has, uh, or fortunately has has driven or has speed up the digitalization. So I'm from Croatia. We for 25 years didn't manage to digitalize our economy. Now we did it in two months. So you can do everything online, uh, and a lot of brands have, sorry, have adopted uh, digitalization, where one of the key things is the digitalization of communication, where again, you can imagine how Viber and uh, being it business messages, being it uh, bots can, can help. But more importantly, talking with our clients, we realize that all of them think that the digital, this trend is here to stay after, uh, after COVID uh, goes away. So that's very important because Many brands realize the, the cost cutting and efficiency of having and adopting digital channels. So that's the most important thing that after COVID goes, it will remain and it will be more and more used. Yes, definitely. We, we're not expecting uh, things uh, to change back you know, to, to what they were before. I mean, we already advanced and uh, we already evolved. So. I'm guessing the the tech and the industry is not going, it's never going backwards in that sense. Um, okay, so we uh, we discussed about the conversations and uh, the two-way uh, conversations uh, users and brands uh, on Viber, but of course that uh, there is another uh, type of uh, communication. Um, that is done, uh, which is uh, actually the, the the need of the brands to market uh, their business, uh, to do uh, to offer promotions, and and we see that a lot of uh, businesses are using business messages to send uh, this type of uh, uh, messages to their end uh, clients. Um, we see that uh, they're able to to manage their campaigns. Uh, in, a, in a very, uh, let's say, more sophisticated way um, because there, we are actually providing a lot of tools to analyze the messages that uh, were sent and the uh, brands actually have um, real-time, let's say, statuses uh, of the message and what it did. If it was uh, when it was sent, uh, read, um, when users uh, clicked the uh, message and in the bottom line, uh, we can uh, we can say that the brands can analyze the success uh, of their campaigns, uh, and what uh, more important is is that they can understand the ROI and plan ahead uh, also uh, the future campaigns. Uh, if we're just uh, uh, to to talk about um, uh, numbers a little bit, so uh, we can 
we already understand that uh, the behavior of the consumer has changed, uh, shifted. Uh, we see that uh, um, there was uh, a, a research that uh, actually showed that more than uh, 71% uh, of brands expect uh, to communicate um, uh, with users uh, in real time. Uh, I think budgets were allocated uh, according to these type of channels. Um, we also know that uh, a lot of shopping, uh, shopping right now uh, also shifted to online. I think uh, the numbers shows that 52% uh, are uh, doing online shopping, um, which is a lot. Uh, and I'm sure again that uh, the COVID has an uh, influence and uh, pushed this uh, uh, to these uh, results. Um, in general, we see uh, around 20% increase uh, in time spent on the messaging apps each day. Um, so the audience is there, um, the customers are there, um, and they're using the platform not only for messaging anymore, uh, but to do, to do, to deal with all their other aspects in life. And so it's a good opportunity uh, to use uh, for businesses to use uh, this channel both for communication with their existing uh, client through business messages, uh, as, uh, as I said, but also to acquire uh, new clients um, via ads or the chatbots um, like uh, we also offering. Um, and Matan, I think uh, it's probably the best time uh, to, to move on to the next uh, topic that uh, is actually sure. giving us uh, a, a full solution of uh, of the Viber uh, product to the users. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, th thanks, Noah. Um, uh, Noah, you and Kresho discussed a lot about changing the experience um, uh, of the user uh, and increasing engagement uh, by moving from a simple SMS to uh, to business messages and to messaging from from the app uh, to the business from the from the consumer to the enterprise and, and vice versa and uh, lately and, and I, I want to shift now and talk about the voice and uh, it goes naturally uh, with business messages because uh, we 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 recently uh, launched um, a, a better product called uh, business calls and uh, with the target of bringing the voice experience to the, uh, the, to the messaging exper experience we created. So uh, in addition to uh, the user being able to message the enterprise, uh, we, we, uh, from the app, from, the, from our uh, Rakuten Viber app, um, the user will also be able to make a voice call and also the business will be able to call back to the user on the app, increasing uh, and changing the experience and increasing the engagement. Um, and, and I want to, and, and uh, Fresho, you said, um, you said Viber is, uh, you mentioned that Viber is leading the industry. We've started, we, we were the first to start with the business messages. Now we are the first to start with the business calls. Um, and uh, I think we found a very flexible and, and, and fast uh, partner uh, with Infobip. And, um, and uh, this beta, this Preda product is now something we are uh, offering with Infobip. And um, Kresho, well, sh please share a little bit uh, uh, about it from your perspective. Yeah, sorry, I'll just remove because I have like half of my head sorry for that it's, it's better like this uh yeah, yeah so we start yeah i was missing half of the head so no no branding <laughs> i branded first yeah so we uh and that's again part of the evolution of the what i was mentioning so uh voices today is still very very important in many countries globally uh for the customer support mainly use cases so having as I mentioned, so Viber business messages, what notifications, that's one part of the customer journey. Then it comes Viber bots, which is closing uh, the whole customer journey, including the customer support. And 
voice being very important uh, during the customer support and really for escalations and, and fast uh, fast solving problems all of us on the call will will choose to go with uh, with voice and they have the possibility that while you are chatting you are able to press a button and get get on the call it's 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 really exceptional so it is uh complementing or closing the whole uh, whole ecosystem uh that really you have all the tools necessary to to provide the best quality of service to your uh, to your end users we see a lot of engagement i have as we speak i received two emails related to to, to viber voice to potential clients so it is uh, very interesting uh, as voice is one of the biggest challenge uh, sorry one of the biggest channels still uh, out there on the on the market in customer support primarily yeah yeah uh th thank you Kresho. i think um maybe if i if i elaborate a little bit about what business calls is uh essentially we have a consumer uh chatting with the business on the viber app using the business messages and uh at the one point in time uh this user may want to um increase uh, 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 take the conversation to the next level move to voice because as as as, as you said Kresho. Uh, voice is uh, is is a is a better communication channel when you want to uh, pass uh, complex messages and you and 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 you want to solve problem fast. Um, obviously, everyone likes to chat, but from time to time, we all need to make a voice call. Um, so, with a very very easy click to call button on the chat screen that Viber is offering a user will will uh, move from the chat to to the call experience with the, with the business uh, he's chatting with um, it uh, so so a very intuitive um, uh, transition from chat to uh, to a voice call um, in addition uh, we will be able to to create two uh two call buttons one call button if you want to talk with the customer support and another call button if you want to talk to the sales um obviously we will we also allow enterprises to call the user so the, the user is um is available on the app and the enterprise will call the user we, uh, another very uh, a very uh, good thing that we, we 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 are able to do is to show the user the waiting time on the call center. So the user, uh, so uh, when user um, is on the business page on the Rakuten Viber app, and he wants to make a call, but he see that uh, he may wait too long, like for ten minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes the call center is very busy and it's not a good time to call the call center then the uh, so the user uh, uh, for once can see the waiting time and in addition the user will have a button to request a callback so the enterprise so the enterprise will get a notification that there is a user who wants to be called and later on when when the agents are free on the on the call center side they will call the user back on the on the rapid and fiber app now uh, now uh, once on the call the user and the enterprise can share a screen and can share information uh, in parallel to talking can share information on the chat screen and can share screen can share files uh, which is very very helpful when you talk to when you talk to a business when you talk when you talk to a call center so that's another great thing that uh, uh we're offering on the business calls in addition to that uh at the end of the call the use uh the enterprise can pop up a service level survey to the user asking him how are you happy with the service you got you you get do you have any recommendation do you have any complaints um also uh, uh, uh the enterprise can choose to pop up a, a, co a serve a, an additional offering offering um additional services uh to the one uh that were already discussed so this is uh from our perspective uh a full uh experience 
the messaging and the calling experience get a new uh, a new way of uh, of doing things uh, between enterprise and users by using a smart uh, OTT app. Um, looking at the perspective of the industry of this, I think uh, the industry is still not there when we talk about the voice. And uh, from the messaging part, we've been there first, as as uh, as Noah mentioned, as, as Kresho mentioned. Uh, we've seen uh, other uh, players uh, following up uh, our steps. So, and now it's very popular uh, to see enterprises using um, uh, OTTs as a communication channel. Um, and, uh, and what we and what Rocket and Viber is trying to do is, is to, to lead the industry uh, with, uh, with new products. Uh, Kresho, um, do you want to add uh, anything else? I think we have Kresho freezed. Um, so, yeah. So until Kresho is back, um, I think we're going to... Okay, so, so there is a technical problem on Kresho's side. Um, and um, we will continue to talk about voice um, uh, with you, Tzvika. Uh, um, so, uh, Svika, maybe just an uh, uh, introduction uh, of yourself, please, and, uh, and, and your company, and then we'll continue the discussion. Okay, good day, everybody. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, my name is Svika Kasti. I'm managing uh, the region of uh, Wholesale Europe for Telecom Italia Sparkle, which is the wholesale arm of Telecom Italia Group. Uh, we are uh, concentrated in the wholesale and we are uh, market leaders. We are in the top 10 on all the products, including uh, the voice products, IP data, mobile service, and enterprise solution. So I'm very happy to be here uh, to describe also the, our evolution of the relations with Viber from a, a pure customer for termination to a partner. Yeah, thank you, thank you Tzvika. Um, looking at uh, looking at the at the voice market specifically, and um, you know you've been in the vo in this voice market for so many years, and we've been working together for uh, many many years. Um, and looking at the voice market today, what are the trends uh, and uh, the, ma the the major things happening uh, nowadays on the on the voice? Of course, you cannot avoid on the voice market, you know, I'm hearing that the voice is dying from the last 20 years, so it's dying, but slowly, okay? So <clears throat> nobody would expect in uh, 20 years ago that the voice will still survive as it is today. So there is a market for the voice. Of course, there's natural decline because of the uh, OTT penetration. So uh, <clears throat> as a traditional voice, but still they are very important element of our business industry, margins, etc. And therefore for us, the best formula is to work well with uh, the OTT because the end of the day, we have to target the end customer, which is making the call and it doesn't matter which platform he's using, we need to terminate the call all around the world. So uh, put aside also the COVID effect in a way, uh, had heard a lot the roaming industry. Nobody of us is roaming any longer. So this was another negative effect on the on the voice uh, wholesale voice industry for the international one in 2020. Hope we will uh, recover on the second part of 20. Yeah, yeah, definitely roaming um, uh, is expecting a recover uh, uh, with the airlines. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and all the players that enjoy uh, people traveling. Mm -hmm. um, I think on the other hand, we, we also see that uh, calling is still there and there is a lot of, uh, uh, there is, uh, I think, you know, when people in quarantine and people can travel, they call more. And uh, I think we've, we've seen that. Um, I think Rakuten and Viber and, and Telecom Italia Sparkle have shared their routes uh, the voice routes with each other along the years, and uh, similar to um, 
similar to how to the way we've done on the SMS A to P, we uh, we in Ragwood and Viber we've taken our voice routes and uh, share them with the industry, and uh, we create a very very good partnership with Telecom Italia Spartel. Um, uh, both of us, both Rakuten and Viber and Telecom Italia Spartel, are a big player in North Africa and the Middle East, um, and uh, we've been able uh, we've been able to partner uh, together with the local uh, MNOs uh, in the Middle East um, uh, and offer them uh, our our services. And uh, we've seen a very nice uh, growth in that in that region. Um, um, uh, Zvika, uh, would you like to maybe share a little bit about more about our cooperation together? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll go back for 2015. We started together. We just provide the termination for Viber, so it was one-sided uh, the flow of the traffic. Where today, from our perspective, uh, Viber is a wholesale player like any other players in the market, call it Orange, T-Systems, AT&T, et cetera. So we don't distinguish. And uh, the traffic is really bilateral. Well, <clears throat> we identify, as, as you said, uh, a joint corridors, uh, which, which are win-win for both parties. And if they are win-win for both parties, for sure they are win-win for the end customers. So, we identified special deals and routes in North Africa and the Middle East. And uh, basically, I think we are providing very good service to these countries uh, through our uh, mutual relationship. Uh, and as you said before, you know, we don't foresee the OTTs as a threat or as a competitor for our as a partner. And we would just want to expand more and more our relationship with the OTTs because you cannot ignore the underlying asset, which is the, the end user platform, which is using to initiate the calls. Yes, yes. Uh, th th thank you, Tzvika. You mentioned uh, um, looking at, uh, at Rakut and Viber as, uh, as, uh, as a partner. Uh, I think uh, it's getting, I think um, our position is getting even, even stronger uh, nowadays as uh, Viber is not longer just Viber is today we are Rakut and Viber. We are part of a very big group, uh, a very big Japanese group called Rakuten. And lately, uh, this group has done a very major step in the telecom industry by creating the fourth MNO in Japan uh, called Rakuten Mobile. Um, this step of the group uh, is uh, for me as the one in charge uh, on the telecom side uh, here in Viber is really, really exciting. I think it gives us uh, a new opportunities. Uh, we are uh, blurring uh, the borders. We are now not just an over-the-top player. We are also an MNO player in Japan. And, and obviously, uh, Rakuten Telecom Department is, is excited. And uh, 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 obviously, uh, the, the first channel to go when you want to connect to Rakuten Mobile. Um, in addition to that, uh, the European Union uh, lately uh, came in and asked uh, voice of variety players to be a registered telecommunication provider in the European Union. Um, so, um, so now we are in a process of being a registered telecommunication provider in the European Union. And the first country, interestingly, uh, uh, the first country that uh, we are registered in is Italy. Um, so, uh, and we're going to uh, be a registered telecommunication provider in all the European Union countries. So now I think um, uh, um, Viber, Rapid and Viber is a complete, is, a, is, a, is now not only an outsider bringing the users and the app uh, to the experience, we are also an, an, a, a player on the telecom market and also can provide infrastructures and connections to, to MNOs uh, in the industry. Um, yeah, 
So um, I think um, um, at this point, um, we are free to take questions. And uh, um, Noah, uh, did you, uh, do you, do you want to refer to one of the questions? Let's see what we have. Uh, I think it's a question regarding uh, the, um, the, the, the last uh, topic you discussed about, Matan, and not really about business messages. If okay, okay, let me see. Read the message. Uh, with some networks, um, uh, all, all uh, CS services and other networks launching is LTE only or G5 only? Is Rakut and Viber an opportunity for operators without um, Volet and Volti. roaming uh, for customers onto those networks? Um, well, uh, yeah, I think, well, well obviously, uh, in case of the Rakut and mobile, um, we, we definitely will be able to help connect to uh, their 5G network. Um, so the answer is, is yes. And I think, um, and, and, and I think um, we will help Rakuten Mobile a lot with their international uh, needs uh, for both messaging and, and calling. Um, and uh, bridge the gap, uh, if there is any gap, uh, between uh, their uh, advanced technologies and uh, the current technologies today in the market. Um, waiting for more questions. I don't see more questions in the Q&A section, but uh, we do have a few questions uh, that uh, sometimes we get asked uh, in, uh, in webinars. So maybe I can address one uh, uh, very subjective. Uh, I will choose this one. Um, so sometimes um, we're being asked what is the uh, uh, what are the advantages of business messages uh, in comparison to other uh, um, the alternative, the emails, uh, SMS, etc. Um, so I think it's already uh, it, I can I can say uh, uh, that there are a few things that are basic um, in business messages. First of all, it's very uh, uh, clear. Uh, that the way the message is arriving to the device uh, of the customer uh, is, is different. Uh, it's, uh, it's about rich text. Um, it's uh, 1,000 characters uh, in one message. We don't, uh, we don't need to split the messages. Uh, it can include the buttons, um, uh, CTA buttons, uh, links and images, um, everything in one message. Um, one uh, more, uh, uh, one advantage, uh, obviously, is the, the business model. Uh -huh. Unlike uh, the competitors, the, the charge is only per uh, the delivered the message, not for everything that uh, was sent. Um, and then go back to uh, the, the real-time statuses. So there is a callback for each status. Um, if the message was uh, arrived or not, if it was blocked, if it's not a Viber user. Uh, and then it gives really um, a full uh, uh, solution uh, for, the, for the business that wants to ensure 100% of his database uh, receive the messages because uh, the way we work uh, with Infobeep and with MessageBird and uh, with all our partners um, is uh, a fallback SMS. Um, uh, which means that first we're trying to send the message uh, over Viber. Then if uh, there are internet issues, the message uh, can't be delivered, or if it's not a Viber user, then there is a fallback to SMS that ensure 100% um, that uh, everyone 
uh, on the database uh, will receive the message that uh, the brand uh, meant to send, even if it's not on Viber, uh, uh, but uh, the, the alternative, the SMS callback. Uh, so this is really a, a key uh, advantage. Uh, and of course, uh, all the other uh, advantages that uh, including the separation of uh, um, the messages type. So we consider transactional message um, uh, as the messages that not including uh, images, for example, uh, that they are more plain text. And as such, the price is uh, different. Um, then again, it helps to control uh, maybe to manage the campaigns uh, better, uh, the ROI uh, of the campaigns. And uh, this is for uh, the basic uh, advantages. Um, I think uh, um, there was uh, also another uh, question that uh, sometimes uh, uh, repeated uh, regarding um, how secure uh, is Viber, uh, how secure are business messages. And I think it's also uh, a very uh, big topic uh, to touch and, and maybe uh, uh, to review here. Um, we have a lot of clients from all types of clients that are uh, sending business messages, also banks and financial institutions. Um, and um, it's uh, secure. Uh, obviously, they're uh, sending uh, content uh, that has to be secure. Um, so we are encrypted. Um, and um, we, when we are integrating uh, with, the, uh, with the partners uh, to our servers, we are actually whitelisting a very limited number of IPs and not domains for business messages. It's a very important um, uh, method. Um, we are a connect uh, our connection um, with our servers uh, and with the Palm service uh, also secure and uh, it's HTTPS only uh, for the businesses and for the customers. Um, nothing um, is shared or stored uh, in Viable servers uh, once it's delivered. Uh, we also are not exposed to the content of the messages. Um, and most important, uh, I think, especially uh, according to the um, uh, to the last uh, updates we heard from a uh, few other messaging uh, apps, um, we're not selling any customer information, data, or phone number or anything to anyone. Uh, and I think this is also a very uh, important uh, uh, topic um, that uh, also came uh, to the front after the COVID outbreak. We saw a lot of um, privacy issues and uh, um, we, we really wanted uh, to stress this um, for this reason. I think uh, this is it from my end, Vitan, regarding yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Noah. Thank you for elaborating more. Um, I, uh, we're, we're very close to, uh, to finish uh, our round table. Um, and I want to say that we will be very happy to continue the discussion and answer questions um from anyone so um i'm going to share now uh our contact details so uh if you want to uh reach out to us uh please uh feel free um, um okay just a second yeah okay so here it is uh here is our uh, contact details for anyone who wants to to reach out uh, later after we finish this session. Um, I want to say thank you very very much uh, first to our panelists uh, Dan Richards from MessageBird, Sviga Kaspi from Telecom Italia, Sparkle, and Kreshtersmark from Infobip uh, for joining us and uh, sharing uh, your experience um, and your ideas about, uh, about OTTs. Uh, it was a pleasure and it was uh, very interesting, if I may say. 
Um, I also want to thank anyone who joined uh, us here at the round table in the GSMA WAS 13. Thank you very much uh, for joining and uh, feel free um, to contact us uh, via email or via uh, our phone number. You can obviously uh, send us a Viber message or, uh, or call us. Um, I'm very excited uh, uh, about this and thank you very much. Uh, and I really, really hope uh, to have the next round table uh, and a face-to-face -face, uh, hall uh, where everyone is there uh, healthy and happy. So uh, thanks again and uh, see you soon face-to-face -face, very, very soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.